Hello, welcome to another video. This is an equation, it's actually a trig equation that we're going to try to solve. So you have this complicated composition of the cosine of the arc tangent of the sine of the arc cotangent of x is 3 over 4. What is x? It looks like a long journey you're going to take. Unfortunately, this ratio here we can't really find this on what we know as the unit circle um, easy values, okay? So 3 over 4 is on the unit circle, but we don't know it. It's not one of those common angles. So, um, so you can't really predict. We could have just skipped this part and just gone to what this is and then try and work on this because we know what cosine, what angle will give us 3 over 4. But at this point, we really don't know what angle that's going to be. So... What we do is we start from the inside. And this is what I usually tell students to do whenever you see a composition of um, functions and inverse functions that are not directly related. What you do first is to know whether you're dealing with a ratio or you're dealing with an angle. Let's get into it. Like I said, the first thing to do is identify what you're dealing with, and that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to say that um, when you take the cosine of something, that something must be an angle. So we know that from here to here, what we have is an angle. But we know that when you take the arc tangent of anything, what you have is actually a ratio. And if you take the arc the sign of anything, what you have is an angle. You see that? And the arc cotangent of anything is a ratio. So we know that x has to be a ratio, or at least it's not an angle, it's a number, okay? So x is a number. Slash ratio. This will help you a lot in determining what you're actually looking for. What you're looking for is a number or a ratio, okay? The same thing, depending on whether it's rational or not, okay? Now, so let's begin solving it starting from the inside. Now, so because what you're looking for is a ratio, it means that the inverse cotangent of a ratio will give you an angle. And we already said it that this is an angle, look. That's an angle, what you get, because that angle feeds into the sign. So, because we're looking for an angle, the first key, step one, is to draw a right triangle. Such that the angle you're looking for, we don't know, because we're going to get an angle, we call it theta. So we're going to go from angle to ratio to angle, okay? And then we can go back to this. But let's see what that looks like. Now, what do we have? We have... Um, the angle we're looking for is this, but we know, so let's go here. Let's just start from here. We know that arc cotangent of this, of x, okay, will be equal to theta. But in order to get theta, we have to say that the cotangent of this, okay, so let's take the cotangent of both sides. So the cotangent of the arc cotangent of x, is equal to um, the cotangent of theta. And what does that mean? It means x equals cotangent theta, which implies x equals cotangent of theta. So that's the reason we have this triangle, because from this relationship now, you can say, what's the cotangent of theta? It is adjacent over cotangent is adjacent over opposite, okay? So if adjacent over opposite is x, that means this is x over 1. That's it. So the first thing you have obtained from this expression here is that you could write theta as um, you can write, you can make a right triangle where this is your x and this is your 1, and you can complete the triangle, actually. So this is x, and by Pythagorean identity, this is the square root of x squared plus 1. 
So step one is done and we know what our angle is and what the triangle that it relates to is. So we're good. So let's move on to the next one. The next one says that the sine of this angle, remember that this angle gives us theta. So the sine of theta, what would the sine of theta be? Oh, we can easily find sine theta from here. So we're going to say that sine theta is equal to, from this triangle, is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 1 over, what would that be? Square root of x squared plus 1. We're good. So the next thing now is to find the arctangent of sine theta, which is the arctangent of this. So we can say that um, we have arctan, arctan 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. Remember, every time you take an arctangent, you're supposed to get an angle, just like we did get an angle here. So we need another triangle, okay? So let's say this is equal to, let's give it another name. Um, what angle will this be? Let's call it alpha, okay? So for alpha, we're going to make another triangle. We say this angle is alpha. And we know that if we take the tangent of both sides, what do we get? Let's do it here. If we take the tangent of this, the tangent of this will be equal to the tangent of alpha. But the tangent of the inverse tangent is just this. So this simply implies, let's write it here, we now know that tan alpha will be equal to just what's inside here, which is 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Oh, now we can come back to this. So what we have is the tangent of alpha is going to be opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. Oh, nice. So it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So this is now our new adjacent, x squared plus 1. And this, by Pythagorean identity, will be the square of this plus the square of this. Well, the square of this is just 1, and the square of this removes the square root, so it's going to be 1 plus x squared plus 1, which gives us x squared plus 2 square root. Nice. So now we've got it. Now we have a triangle to use for the next step. We're going to now be taking the cosine of this angle, so we know that the cosine of that angle, which is alpha, remember, all of this, um, this without the tangent was alpha. So the cosine of alpha will be equal to just the cosine from here. It's adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be the square root of x squared plus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2. Nice. And we said that this, all of this, is equal to 3 over 4. We found the answer. Okay, so we can say um, this is the same thing as the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2. So finally, we have a simple equation we can solve because now we can say that this is equal to 3 over 4. Therefore, the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals 3 over 4. We can square both sides, and if we square both sides, let's square both sides. We're going to get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals 9 over 16. You're going to get 16x squared plus 16 equals 9x squared plus 18. Ah. <sighs> If you subtract 9x squared from both sides, you're going to end up on this side with 7x squared. 7x squared will be equal to, subtract 16 from both sides, you're going to get 2 equals 2. Mmm, nice. So what do we have? It tells us that x squared equals 2 over 7. So we have x squared equals 2 divided by 7, such that x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 over 7. So you have two possible values of x. x is either 2 over 7 
or minus 2 over 7. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.